Hello and welcome to my new video series where we discuss the dependency inversion principle. It is one of the famous solid principles of object-oriented design and it was published by Robert C. Martin, also known as Uncle Bob, in 1996. You can read his paper on objectmentor.com and of course you can find this link in the descriptions below. In this series, we'll check out the first example Uncle Bob discussed in his paper by re-implementing it in C-sharp. We'll see why dependency inversion is useful and how it leads to another important concept called dependency injection. And furthermore, we check out how we can inject dependencies with a so-called DI container. So let's jump right into it. Here is the task that will kick off our implementation. Write a program called copy that performs the following steps. Read a character from the console. Output this character to the console if it is not escape. If it is escape, your program should quit. So let's implement this in C-sharp. I've created a console application project in Visual Studio 2015 and I start with a method called copy. In it, I create a loop where I first use the console read key method to obtain a single character from the user that I store in a variable. The true argument tells the read key function that the character that is returned is not immediately written to the console output stream. Afterwards, I check if the user pressed escape. If that is the case, then I'll jump out of the copy function. Otherwise, I'll output the read character using console.write. The simple implementation fulfills the needs of the task. We did create a very basic console text editor. One important thing I want you to notice is the absence of object orientation. We only wrote a static function and we don't use any objects in our code yet. But along with time comes change and we get the following requirement that we should implement in our code. Please modify your copy program so that the caller can choose whether the characters are written to the console or to a file. In the next few minutes, I'll show you how I would have extended the copy function five years ago when I didn't know how to use the tools of object-oriented programming properly. I'll start off with a class called file that is essentially a wrapper for the streamwriter class. It allows static calls to initialize a streamwriter and output characters to it. And as a streamwriter uses native resources in the form of file handles internally, you should at some point dispose it so that these resources are freed as soon as possible. That's what the dispose method is for. Of course, the caller can specify where the characters should be written to. Therefore, I create an enum called target with the two constant values console and file. This enum is used as an argument type for the copy function. In the method body, I have to add an if-else block to call the appropriate method when writing the character. Of course, if the caller chooses the file as a target, I have to initialize access to it before the actual operation starts. Therefore, I add an if statement at the beginning of the method body. When the copy process is complete, I also have to dispose of the file stream, thus I add another if statement that calls dispose if necessary. When we execute this code, you can see that the characters are no longer written to the console, but to the target file. And when I open it, you can see the gibberish I just wrote on the keyboard because I had no visual feedback. But let's jump back to the code and analyze our copy function. Still, I'd argue that it has nothing to do with object-oriented programming. We do use one object, the streamwriter, but it is hidden behind the file class that offers static functions to access it. In copy, we use only static function calls, which I would say is just procedural programming style. And have a look at the complexity of the copy function. It increased dramatically in comparison to the version that only supported console input and output, because we had to add the following things. An argument specifying the target output. An if-else block to choose the correct write function. An if block at the beginning to initialize the file stream if necessary, and an if block at the end to dispose the file stream if necessary. And these four points decrease the readability at an alarming rate. The actual logic of copying characters from input to output is somewhat obscured. 
especially if you compare it to the original version. And it might get even worse when we think of the following situations. Consider that we maybe have to support further output targets in the future. For example, a network stream. You had to extend the copy function once. Why shouldn't there be more change requests in this regard? And this would lead to further else if statements at the end of the loop. Or consider the scenario where your customer or boss wants to have more sources, like reading from a file or a network stream instead of the console. Similarly to the output scenario, this would introduce several if-else statements at the beginning of the loop if we keep the current structure of the copy function. Consider that these service supported inputs and outputs also might require setup or cleanup operations. This would further pollute the code before and after the loop. And finally, consider that your customer wants the copy function to output to several targets, not just to one. How could you do that? I hope you can see that the current solution works, but its structure is not well suited for future changes and it lacks readability. In the next video, we are going to analyze why this rise in complexity actually happened and how we can tackle it with the dependency inversion principle. So thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you again in the next one. Bye!